Hello and welcome to another episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Joy Ravella. Now, you may hear a word that's a little unfamiliar on today's episode. It's the Enneagram, which is relatively new, I believe. It's one of those personality assessments, but my interpretation of it is after you do the assessment, it tells you what things motivate you and what things demotivate you. So if you're wondering what we're talking about later on, that is that. Right now, though, let's get into today's Bible verse. If you love learning, you love the discipline that goes with it. How short-sighted to refuse correction. That's Proverbs 12 verse 1 from the Message Bible. I have got Jackie once again here in studio with me. Jackie, how are you going? I am awesome. Thanks, Joy. How are you doing? So good to be back. Yes, it's been it's been a few weeks. Uh, a few the weeks. first time you were on the podcast, we were talking about your big move. The last time we were talking about the fact that you only had one box left to unpack. Yes. So progress update. Progress update is that there are zero boxes anywhere where you can see them. Nice. <laughs> Shove them all under the bed. <laughs> There's two in the study left to go and they're sitting under the desk very neatly, very hidden. So, Well, you know, boxes serve their purposes. Yes, they do. For sure. Yeah, it's a footrest. Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're taking a look today at this whole concept of learning. Proverbs 12, 1. Loving learning, loving the discipline. Um, what are your first impressions of this one? Look, I'm all for the learning. Love it. I'm a big, as you know, I'm a big reader. Mm. Love a book, love a read, love a learn. Uh, Not so much the discipline or the correction. (laughs) I have to say that's what first stands out to me is what I don't like about it. Yes. I was always the student who picked up things very quickly and teachers would be like impressed or they'd be like, oh, great, you're doing well. But the moment I got negative feedback, I would just switch off. I just, and that's why I've got so many like hobbies that I'm like mildly good at. (laughs) And then I hit a roadblock and I really struggle with the correction and the discipline, but it goes hand in hand with learning. You can only go to a certain extent without making mistakes and then you have to embrace the mistakes, which I'm not the best at, but I guess that's my first impression. Yeah, and fully aware of the irony that correction is a form of learning. Like, (laughs) yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah, I didn't think of it that way. Loving the learning, hating the correction, but whilst admitting and acknowledging that, you know, correction is a form of of learning in and of itself. So, yeah, yeah, Yeah. really good point there, Jackie. One of the things I love asking on the show is what does this verse tell you about who God is? Yeah. Now, if I can not use my own words for this, but paraphrase from the Bible a little bit, I think Hebrews 12 verse 11 sums it up really, really well. It's never fun to be corrected. In fact, at the time, it is always painful. But if we learn to obey by being corrected, we will do right and live at peace. And I think yeah, my thoughts, the Bible's thoughts, same, same. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. It's like a bitter pill. Yes. But it makes you better. Absolutely. Mm. It makes you better in the long run. Have you had an incident in your life where this has really come to play? Um, one of my very, very first jobs, I was a bit like you. I was quick to pick things up. Really, you know, so, you know, you go into the workforce and your boss is like, you're awesome. You're doing really, really well. And then you have your first review sort of six or 12 months in. Mm-hmm. And the one piece of feedback I got from my manager at the time was that I was super great at doing the things that I liked doing. Mm-hmm. And the things that it, he said, it's very obvious the things you don't like doing. Because, <laughs> ouch, you rush them and, you know, you might not do them as well as the things that you do like doing. Now, I did not like that at all. Um, and by the third time he was raising that in a review, review, he wasn't happy either. And that to me, like, it didn't have any long-term consequences. Like, I didn't get sacked or, you know, reprimanded or anything like that. It was just one of those little things that you have with your manager where they're like, you know, you could improve mm-hmm. on that. Um, and I remember after that third time really making an effort 
to, you know, perhaps pay some little bit more attention to the, the record keeping boring bits of the job that I didn't didn't really like. So mm. yeah. So you had, I suppose, the experience of being corrected, having someone say to you, This is an area that you need to grow in mm-hmm. and it sounded like by the third time you were like, Okay, I will take this on board. How did that change things for you in the workplace? How did it um, affect you as someone who loves to learn? Absolutely. So I think the key for me is turning it into a learning experience, Mm. you know, which goes right back to the verse that we were looking at, what we were talking about in terms of correction being a form of learning. Mm. And I think for, you know, those of us who who super love to learn, super love to read, um, or like myself, just stubborn and like a challenge, if you frame it differently like if you change your perspective have a bit of a paradigm shift Mm. you can actually turn it into a positive and a challenge to be overcome so rather I suppose than looking at it like a a black cross rather it's oh it's a pathway to being a better version of yourself absolutely yeah so how did you get to that point where it wasn't something that you didn't like to hear to something you were like okay I'm going to lean into this yeah, that's the tricky bit, isn't it? Because, um, and I remember hearing you on another episode just recently saying you were an Enneagram 3. Yes. Sister, preach it. Oh, high five. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is me as well. And having correction for an Enneagram 3 is almost like, you know, sticking you in the heart, mm-hmm. telling you you're worthless. And, you know, it's a really big emotional journey. Especially if it's got to do with your professionalism. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. I am broken if there's, like, any kind of Uh comment around my work ethic. (laughs) And particularly when I was younger as well. Mm. To me, that equated to being sacked and escorted out of the building at any any given moment. Right. Mm. It was devastating. Um, But I think having that wisdom as you grow a little bit, particularly in your professional life and you have some more opportunity to experience different managers, different work colleagues, and you get exposed to maybe some workplace training around personalities, working styles. It's really informative. So again, it's learning. It's all coming back to learning, learning about yourself, learning about your working style, learning that you can, you know, it's not a punishment. It's actually a learning opportunity and God's right in the middle of it. Today, we are talking about learning and a huge part of learning is being able to receive correction being able to receive feedback. Now, there's definitely a time when people can overdo that. They can give you way too much feedback all at once and you feel overwhelmed and it just seems like this huge thing. Other times, people give you reasonable feedback. People say, hey, like you're doing this really well, but I think if you just fixed this or maybe if you just replied to emails a little more frequently, that would be really good. And at first, when you hear those things, it can definitely have a bit of a triggering response. I mean, no one wants to be told that they're not doing things well. However, if you weigh it up and the advice you're receiving really is for your benefit. It really could help you move towards your goals, be a better partner, father, employee, boss, trainer, whatever it is, then maybe it really could be something you could take on board. I know for sure that this is something I need to work on. When someone gives me feedback, I need to be able to separate their feedback from my sense of self-worth. And that's a journey I need to go on. But I also feel like a really important part of that journey is inviting God into it because ultimately he also wants us to move towards our best version of ourselves and he likes to use people to help us grow. So the application for today's episode is pretty simple. If you get some feedback today or you've received feedback over the last few days that's kind of gotten under your skin a little bit, Isolate it, take it to God, pray over it, and see if there's anything in there that actually is a blessing, that's actually going to be a phenomenal opportunity for you to step into the best version of you. 
Well, that wraps up today's episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm looking forward to catching up again tomorrow.